everyone, Reefer Gill here, and today I'm going to go over my Innovative Marine 20 Nuvo Fusion All-in-One Tank, and that's a mouthful. This build is part of a Nano Tank Challenge dubbed Rico's Nano Tank Challenge 2018. Everyone participating should have a video on YouTube and also should be posting on Instagram. The challenge is going to go for the entire year of 2018. There's lots of sponsors offering some really great prizes for the winners. To learn more about the challenge, you can watch a previous video I did explaining it. A link to that video will be down below in the description. As you may or may not know, I have two builds going on at once. This nano tank I'm removing from its box and a 100 gallon rimless tank. I'll be doing occasional updates on the nano tank build. I will post the updates on random Saturdays for the nano tank and continue with Sundays for the 100 gallon build. So if you're new to the channel and would like to follow along with the two builds, you can subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to be notified when new videos are released. I would also really appreciate those thumbs up, so be sure to take the two seconds to like the video. Go ahead. Lastly, follow me on Instagram to get real-time updates and spoilers on both builds. With that said, let's go ahead and push forward with this video. This is a 20 gallon all-in-one aquarium, meaning it comes with a built-in overflow capable of housing all sorts of accessories like a heater, nano skimmer, nano reactor, filter socks, media baskets, return pump, you name it, they make it. This aquarium is 24 inches long, 15 inches front to back, and 13 inches tall. It comes with a return pump, dual return hoses, flared nozzles, two 200 micron felt filter socks, a heavy duty screen top, a built in self leveling mat which also dampens vibration. Another great feature about the tank is it has clear low iron glass making viewing your aquarium inhabitants more enjoyable as you'll be able to see the coral and fish's true colors. Since I mentioned the heavy duty screen top I did make one modification when it came to the screen top clips. These clips have a tendency to slide around the top of the glass and get out of position. Then when you put the screen top back down, the screen top is unbalanced and smashes down onto the bottom of the aquarium glass. If this screen top were to fall with corals inside of it, it would surely break your corals. To prevent this, I used some double sided tape and placed it on the glass rim, then placed the clip on top to prevent it from moving. Problem solved. For the exception of a heater and a light, this aquarium is pretty much plug and play right out of the box. But if you know me, you know I'm all about the upgrades and the gadgets, so let's talk about those. The light I went with is this Radeon XR15 Pro with the RMS mount. I'll have to figure out the intensity, but the Radeon is a great fit for the system, not only because it's a great light, but also because I have it synced to the other Radeons over my 100 gallon system. The light will be controlled with my Apex through the WXM module. In addition to the Radeon light, I also purchased this diffuser. The diffuser will disperse the Radeon's colors evenly throughout the aquarium. Installing this is very simple. Simply remove the four screws at the bottom of the light and remove the original cover. Replace the original cover with the light diffuser and screw into place. I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick this up, but here's a shot of the light with the original cover on it. Now here's a shot of the light with the diffuser installed. I think I'm going to be very happy with this new accessory on the Radeon light. The diffuser makes the light a lot easier on the eyes. I'll do a separate video in the future on how to install the RMS mounts to this light. I decided to upgrade the pump to this Tunzi Silence 1073.008 recirculation pump. This pump is supposed to be very quiet and capable of pushing 39 to 211 gallons per hour. There's this cool adjustable output to control the flow. The hose fitting that came with the Tunzi pump was too small for the return hose on the aquarium return. I went ahead and removed the hose fitting from the original pump that the tank came with and attached it to the Tunzi pump using some PVC glue. I could have gone to the hardware store to buy the right hose fitting, but after so many trips back and forth to the stores, I decided to take this route. I'm also going to go ahead and remove the flared nozzles and upgrade those with the random flow generators. These nozzles do exactly what the name implies, they provide a random flow for your display. These don't only provide a more natural flow pattern to your aquarium, but they also do not have any mechanical moving parts that can break. The random flow is generated by the design of the nozzles. These random flow generator nozzles come in all kinds of sizes, I even placed a pair of these on my 100 gallon system. To install these, simply slide off the original nozzles. 
For the Fusion 20 Nano Tanks, you'll need these adapter fittings. Take the adapter fitting and insert the round end into the RFG nozzle. This does take some force to put it on. Once the RFG nozzle and adapter are connected, slip the other end of the adapter into the return hose. And that's it. It's super easy. A shout out to Vivid Creative Aquatics for being one of the sponsors to the Nano Tank Challenge. If you're interested in these nozzles, visit their website, a link will be down below in the description. The next piece of equipment I'll be installing is this Tunzi Osmolator Nano 3152 for auto top off. The Tunzi ATO will be dropped into my 5 gallon eShop's Pacific M ATO reservoir located directly below the Nano Tank. The reservoir will be shared with my 100 gallon system so I'll have two ATO pumps sitting inside of it. I'm going to do a separate video in the future on how to install the Tunzi Nano ATO. I purchased this box of Marine Pure Bio Balls to house additional beneficial bacteria in the rear compartment. The more surface area I can provide beneficial bacteria with, the better my chances are at removing ammonia and nitrites. The Bio Balls will serve as a backup to my live rock. The Bio Balls will be placed inside one of the shelf spaces in this innovative Marine Caddy. The Caddy has three shelves total. I'm not sure what I'll be using the other shelves for, maybe some additional Bio Balls, GFO, Carbon, Macroalgae, I'm not sure yet. For circulation, I'll be using this Ecotech MP10 that I'm currently using in my bin with my live rock. It's a pump I already had and recently upgraded to the Quiet Driver thanks to Ecotech Marine for that. The pump is all ready to go and will be controlled via my Apex unit. I have a second EB832 underneath the stand where the nano tank sits. I have a couple of Apex modules connected to it to include a PM2. The PM2 was a carryover from my Apex Classic. After I sold my Apex Classic, I held on to the PM2 and now found a use for it. I'll be connecting the temperature probe and a pH probe to monitor the nano tank. As for the rock, I'll be using this man-made rock from Real Reef Rock. The rock is dead, which means it doesn't come with any unwanted hitchhikers. The rock also comes in purple to mimic coralline algae, which I thought was a nice touch. I purchased about 12 pounds of it and I can't wait to use it in escape. I really like the look of sand bed, although I've seen some very cool bare bottom systems. I'm going to stick with the sand though. I'm going with this Nature's Ocean Life Sand. It has a mix of 0.5mm grains up to 1.7mm grains. My goal is to have an inch to an inch and a half deep sand bed. And for cleaning the glass, I purchased this Nano Flipper. I used its larger brother in my previous 75 gallon system and fell in love with this glass cleaner. It has a strong magnet and is buoyant in the event the two parts become separated. One side of the cleaner has a glass scrubber. Flip it over and you can clean the glass with the scraper to scrape off more stubborn spots on the glass. Lastly, I went with the Cobalt 100 watt heater. The heater will go in the return section in the rear overflow and will be plugged into my apex to control when it turns on or off based on the apex temperature probe I mentioned earlier. As of right now, that's all I plan on running on this nano tank. Nothing is set in stone, so I'm hoping that routine water changes will take care of everything else. As I get a better feel of what this nano tank needs or doesn't need, I'll make adjustments as time goes on. I'm not planning on running a skimmer at the moment, I want to see if water changes alone will handle the export of nutrients. This is a work in progress, so time will tell how the system's equipment will evolve. Feel free to leave any comments down below. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.